Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, and Jesus is that light of the world. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's the eternal light of life. This is a... Uh, I don't know, not so much a Bible study, but a, probably kind of a rehash on some other things, some thoughts, uh, some things to consider. And uh, uh, the, two most, the two most hated doctrines of the Christian faith, and of course these 501c3, IRS-approved, state chartered tax exempt businesses that dare to have the name church in them like first baptist church or whatever of whatever the two most hated doctrines of of all that they do everything in their power to hide from god's sheep is one who is Israel? And when you know the answer to that, you start asking, well, who are those people over in the Middle East that claim to be that? Ah, who are they really? Well, that's the second thing that uh, these so-called churches try to hide and hate and will do everything in their power to silence you know, there was a group that called themselves the Worldwide Church of God. Uh, what was his name? Herbert Armstrong. And he would he taught what they basically call uh, British Israelism. And, of course, uh, they will tell you that those antichrists over in the Middle East are, are is, well, one of the 12 tribes, uh, Judah, but uh, I don't think so. Those of you who have listened to me for a while, uh, you know that when you look at the promises that God made to the individual tribes, uh, there are a certain group of people just does not fulfill them. So you are left with the thought Either God lied and didn't fulfill the promises he made to that particular tribe, or we're looking in the wrong place, or we're being told the wrong place. So, some of you are going to probably be martyred, and some of you will probably end up going into the wilderness, Revelation chapter 12. We're going to go into all this. But uh, some things you should think about. Sometimes I go on social media just to see what kind of garbage they're peddling. Uh, for example, I went back to Gab for a little bit just so that if when You Know Who tube uh, finally mutes me or deletes my channel or whatever or gives me another strike um, people could look for me on either rumble odyssey or gab but gab is i i think it's garbage i really do i think these honestly i think these free speech sites so-called exist for one reason and one reason over only so that they know who to collect when the time comes and so, like I say, some of us will be martyred. And some of us will go into the wilderness. And some of these people that attend the 501c3 businesses that claim to be a church, you know, I mean, after all, uh, you ever ask, have, have you ever had anybody ask you, Hey, uh, come with us. Let's go to church on Sunday. 
Uh, that's impossible. You cannot go to church on Sunday or any other day because the church is not a building. See, these people are confused from the get-go. God's people are the church, <laughs> not a building. You don't go to church. We are the church. You know, you can go to the car, but you're not a car. You can go to the garage and get in the car, but you're not a car, you're not a car and you're not a garage. And you don't go to church. We are the church. But most of these pastors are probably possessed of a devil or masons or just paid for whores. I should have said harlots, but you know, same difference. I am convinced that uh, 998 out of a thousand pastors are work for the devil. I really, really am. I mean, I, I, I could be wrong, but that's kind of just my guess. But, uh, you know, they want you to believe in Jesus just enough so that you'll send them their tithe, your tithe money. Of course, they don't need it because they're being paid off by the enemy. But uh, not enough to change your life or to read the book. And when you go to their little business on Sunday, uh, they're going to fill your head with all kinds of false things. Uh, for example, dispensationalism, which is taught in the so-called Baptist churches, uh, it, that comes from the word to dispense. It means to give something. You ever heard of a soap dispenser? Yeah. Well, that's what dispensations are. It means to give something. Moses was given the law, and Christ gave us grace. There's only two dispensations in the Bible, the Old and the New Testament, or covenants. That's it. You know, but the Baptists will tell you, oh, well, there's seven of them. Huh? Yeah, and then they chop the Bible up into these periods of time, which has nothing to do with anything. And by the time you read all this garbage, you're so confused, you don't know what's what. And even if the Bible says something plain and clear, they'll tell you, oh, that's a different time period, a different dispensation. That doesn't apply to us. And that was for the, that's for Israel. That's not for the church. Well, we're going to get into that. You know, the thing is, when you, uh, these social media sites, uh, let's take, for example, uh, Gab. Um, I was on Gab, oh, about a year ago, and uh, was paying and put some Bible studies up on it. And, you know, I, I'm showing I'm getting a thousand views a day, but no comments. How does that happen? A thousand views with no comments. I mean, not just for a day, but I mean for a week. So somebody, they were just knocking up the, the view count. And uh, I've made hundreds of posts, some of them my videos, and you know, I get some likes and what have you, but there's only like two, two three people that comment. And it, it's insane. I, you know, honestly, I think they're just, uh, the enemy is just using all this just to see what everybody's saying so that they know who the patriots are, uh, who the true believers are and uh, who to get rid of when the time comes. Because uh, one day the lights will go out and who knows, they might blame, you know, Iran or uh, North Korea or whoever the boogeyman of the month is, Russia, whatever, uh, China, whatever. And... Uh, Maybe some uh, terrorist attacks. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, maybe blame those terrible, horrible white supremacists. You know, maybe blame them too. Uh, declare martial law and uh, 
you know, maybe what they've done in the past is cut off food. Um, for example, in France, during the uh, French Revolution, they blocked the roads going into Paris. So the farmers couldn't get in to sell their products. And then within a few, you know, I don't know, few days, few weeks, whatever, food ran out, people were rioting. Of course, they blamed it on the king, but it wasn't the king. And uh, next thing you know, the king is dead and uh, they, they killed the king. Yeah. Oh, one of the other things, too, is uh, absolutely do not want us to know about the satanic C, D, S, E, E, D line. Oh, man, they do not want you to know about that. And if you don't believe in it, uh, may I suggest you read The Parable of the Wheat and the Tares? I got a playlist on it. May I suggest you read Ezra chapter 9? talking about the holy seed, you know, I mean, these are the things that the modern so-called church world will fight you tooth and nail. I mean, I've actually just, you know, non-confrontational, just asking questions in a Bible study that I was invited to, and then you're told to get out, you know, get out of here or, you're, or we're going to call the police on you for trespassing. <laughs> You know, uh, these people are, they're evil, definitely evil. But, um, you know, Gab is just around to collect names. And I think Twitter is too. Uh, everybody's like, oh, Elon Musk, he's all for free speech and blah, blah, blah. But you got to realize Musk family, uh, they owned an emerald mine in South Africa. Now, a lot of people don't know it, but the African National Congress, the black uh, modern day whatever group running it, uh, it's a, they're openly communist. I got a picture of Mandela in front of a Soviet hammer and sickle flag, or a red Soviet hammer and sickle flag with his fist up. I mean, communists, come on. Now, the thing is, you do not leave South Africa or any communist country with money unless you're one of them. And Musk family left with millions and millions. Not only that, um, you know who owns the, the diamond exchange in um, Amsterdam? Take a guess. After all, what do you do with emeralds and diamonds? You make jewelry, right? Uh, how do you spell jewelry? <laughs> Take the thir first three letters and there's your answer. Yeah. So, you know, they're just collecting names. Same thing with Facebook. I mean, come on, Zuckerberg, give me a break. I was kicked out of Facebook uh, at least once or twice. So they're collecting names. And I suspect either they'll turn the lights out and do martial law or possibly uh, another round of uh, COVID disease or something like it, maybe Marburg, Ebola, I don't know. And then uh, mental space shoots will show up at your house and take you away and your neighbors will be like afraid to intervene because these guys in spacesuits are telling you, oh, this family's highly contagious, stay away. You know, but... Uh, you're going to be talking about men with uh, firearms making sure the families are taken away. <clears throat> I know I'm such a ray of bright ray of hope, aren't I? But um, like I say, the Bible curses that were told were come upon us in Deuteronomy, they're coming to pass. All the flood of Heathen aliens? Oh, yeah. That was foretold in the days of Moses. Have you noticed all the first world countries are formerly Christian countries? And they're predominantly, they were predominantly white. They're not really anymore. So, I think the census is wrong. 
when they tell you America's 55% white, I think it's more like about 25% white. I don't know. But uh, why is it that every third world country is non-white? Why is that? And why is it that, uh, you know, even unbelieving people are starting to notice that there's no whites on commercials, very few on television shows. Uh, and, you know, nobody's screaming about refugees going to Japan or Korea or China or Africa. You know, n nobody. They're only coming to formerly Christian white countries. You know, and it is. It's the flood of the dragon of Revelation 12, which I have a study on. If anybody's interested, you know, we are being flooded. And all these people, any non-believer can be possessed of a devil or a demon, possession, whatever you want to call it. Any, you know, and... You think these people are not going to um, want to, uh, <laughs> these devils, well, let me let you in on, they're going to want to kill us. Yeah, I know I'm a such an uplifting thing now, but, you know, Satan decided he didn't want to be, play second fiddle in heaven. He decided he wanted to be the top dog, the big cheese, the head honcho, whatever you want to call it. So he rebelled and was kicked out, and a third of all the angels were with him. The, I believe, I can't prove it, but I believe Satan, Gabriel, and Michael were the three archangels, main angels, and they had... They were like the generals, and they had all the troops underneath them. So Satan took a third of his angels, and you're talking probably many, many, many thousands. I don't know how many, but bunches and bunches of them. And all the people can be possessed of these evil things that absolutely want to kill us. Because let's face it, Adam was made in God's image. And by the way, Adam is a racial description, which uh, the modern uh, Bible references gets rid of. Yeah, it's amazing. All the publishing houses are owned by the enemy now. But Adam was made in God's image. And, you know, when Satan and his angels look at Adam... Adam kind, they see God's image that they hated, that they wanted to overthrow and kill. And, you know, they wanted to kill God and take his place. But sorry, it didn't work out. Well, I'm not sorry, but, you know. Sorry, that position's not available. It's already been taken. That position's already been filled. You know, God, right? So, there's uh, several cities, including Washington, D.C., where they're taking illegals and making them police officers. Wow, think about that. Now, if South Africa is any indication of what's coming to the United States, they're going to flood our land with heathens, satanic heathens, and they're going to kill us off. Because that's what they're doing in South Africa. And they've been doing it since the 90s that I know of. I've met a lot of people in South Africa. And they're not allowed to leave, unlike Elon Musk. And they're not allowed to take their money out either. No. Absolutely not. And people actually think, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, Elon, yeah, he's pro-free speech and all this other garbage. Yeah, don't believe it. He's collecting names. They all are. Social media is collecting names. And I think Gab's doing the same thing for uh, when the time comes. 
But uh, you should be preparing yourself mentally, spiritually, and physically. Because there's going to come a day when some of us are going to be uh, either be killed for the faith, probably head chopping, or have to flee into the wilderness. Now you got to realize something. Suppose the power does go out and there's total chaos planned or whatever, and the food's cut off. All the welfare bunnies are going to, uh, well, all the welfare, bu um, yeah. Well, they're going to riot just like they do in every other city. And the uh, easiest way to do that is uh, have the president or whoever call in United Nations troops, of which China will be happy to supply. And you know what? I drove a tractor trailer cross country, a big truck, cross country for about five years. And guess what? I have seen closed military bases. I made deliveries to these places. Closed military bases, so-called, putting in barbed wire fences where the wire faces inward. And you only do that when you want to keep people in, not keep people out. Uh, gates with uh, metal turnstiles. It's sort of like a, a revolving door, but it's made of metal. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, they look like they're prisons. That's what they are. I've seen schools like elementary and high schools. They're doing the same thing. They're putting in climb proof fences. And uh, they're when the, when the, when the trap shuts, your kids are going to be stuck in school and they're not going to be able to get out. And if you uh, don't do what they say, well, they got your kids for hostages. But I've seen foreign troops in the National Forest when I was up on a, on a mountain road. I know, I was in the Army. I know what American military vehicles look like. These were not military vehicles. And when I drove, when I went to truck stops, you would see these foreign military vehicles getting diesel fuel. And it was not American hardware. It was foreign. And they're, spe they're not speaking English. I don't know what language they were speaking. It wasn't Spanish. I grew up in Miami. I know what Spanish is. Uh, there was a time I could converse with somebody in Spanish, but uh, didn't know. It sounded like Eastern European to me, but, you know, I don't know the difference between Polish and Russian or whatever. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be crazy. So, and then there's a thing called the Noahide Laws, where if you look it up, you look read them on the surface they sound okay but when you realize who it was that wrote these and what they believed christians are idolaters and what is the penalty for idolatry uh death method of execution beheading let's take a look at revelation chapter 20 verse 1 now this is at the very very end of the great tribulation and which is why i tell you who is israel is one of the most important questions well it's it may be the most important question of the bible other than well the most important is who is jesus and do you know him does he know you are you in christ that is the most important thing but other than that, who is Israel? Because whoever Israel is, is going to be the object of Satan's wrath in the tribulation. And if you think it's the Antichrist over in the Middle East, well, 
you'd be wrong. So Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1. This is the end of the tribulation. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, that old serpent, you know, the serpent that had been around for a long, long time. You know, think about it. Uh, in, Rev in Genesis chapter 3, when Eve's talking to a serpent, they want you to think about a snake hanging from an apple tree. No. Eve was conversing with the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Eve's not talking to a snake. She's talking to one of the, if not the, most beautiful angel that God created. From what I understand, Eve thought that this, this, this angel was God himself. So, the angel comes down from heaven, key of the bottomless pit with a great chain, grabs hold of the dragon, bounds him a thousand years, verse 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. See, this is what they call the millennium. Uh, Milli is a Latin word that means thousand. There, uh, there's going to be a thousand years of peace on earth where Satan is bound. And my guess is all the people who died before they reached the age of maturity, and I believe that's around 20 years old, all the children that died in childbirth, all the aborted children, uh, they're going to be resurrected during this time period and be taught and tried and tested during this thousand years. And I got a Bible study on that. So, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. See, the modern church world will say, oh, well, that's not us. Really, who is it then? The Antichrist that reject Jesus? What are you? Are, uh, yeah, well, you know they work for the devil. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Some of us are going to be beheaded for Christ. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death, spiritual death, hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So I think uh, all those people that died before the age of accountability, children that were aborted, uh, they're going to be brought up during this thousand years. They're going to be taught. But Satan's going to be loosed. He's going to create another rebellion on earth. Uh, some will follow Satan. And uh, yeah. 
But this right here should tell you, where's the pre-trib rapture? <laughs> you know, the, 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 the pre-trib rapture liars will tell you that these saints are going to be resurrected when Christ is coming back before the tribulation. But right here it tells you they're not resurrected until the end of the tribulation. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Think about it. You know, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. There can't be a pre-first resurrection. It doesn't happen until the end of the tribulation. But the pre-trib rapture crowd will say, oh yeah, well, we're going to be raptured out of here and given new bodies. We're going to be up in heaven having the marriage supper of the Lamb and everybody else on earth can live, you know, hell on earth. No. That's not how it works, people. So, you know, when everything collapses and crashes, uh, people are going to be looking for a savior. And the beast, you know, he's... The Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. And the false prophet is going to be able to do miracles. He's going to mimic the things that Elijah did. Elijah brought fire down from the sky and destroyed, oh, I don't know, a hundred, couple hundred soldiers of King Ahab. The false prophet's going to be able to do the same thing and will probably claim to be Elijah. And Elijah's going to be one of the two witnesses. The Bible declares that. Let's take a look at some of that. All right, you can read about Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 1 and let's say verse 10. Elijah's having a conversation with these soldiers. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of the 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. And then in verse 12, happens again. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 13. I know I'm skipping around a bit, but uh, if anybody wants an in-depth study on this stuff, well, I'll be happy to give you a link. Uh, you know, I got playlists on YouTube that have a lot of this information in depth. Uh, let's see, Revelation 13 and verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So he's trying to look like he's Christ, but really he's speaking, uh, the things he speaks of are of the devil. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwelled therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. See, this beast is probably going to claim to be some kind of savior, save the world. You know, I'm God, come, and I want you to worship me. And those stinking, lousy Blasphemous Christians are holding things up, so we got to get rid of them. Revelation 13, 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Just like Elijah did. People are going to be... When this guy comes... And brings fire down from the sky and destroys those that oppose him. 
there's not going to be any atheists on this earth. Zero. Absolutely none. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Anybody that claims to be a Christian should have read the Bible and know we are not to worship any image. Period. I mean, anybody that's read the Old Testament would know that in the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy. Uh, I've had people tell me, oh, I think the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Uh, well, the thing is, we don't have the beast here yet. It's the beast that makes people take the mark. And the mark's going to be in the right hand or in the forehead. So I think it's getting people ready to take the mark. But for the vaccine to actually be the mark, I don't think so. All right. Uh, verse 16. And he, the beast, causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Uh, were you vaccinated in your right hand or in your forehead? No. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, six, six. Um, and what are they pushing now? Digital currency. I mean, think about it. Can you imagine that if they did have digital currency and had some kind of a chip that they put in your right hand or in your forehead uh, and people say, oh, Bob, it's not a chip. You already have a chip, buddy. Uh, you got a chip in your real ID, your driver's license or government issued ID. You got a chip in your passport. You got a credit card. You got an ATM card, you got a chip. Suppose they combined your government ID with your banking information. And instead of carrying around a card or a passport, they put it on your uh, right hand or in your forehead. You know, uh, about 30 some odd years ago, I believe the Lord showed me that this was coming around 1990 but you know what it's here they have the technology to do this now so you know the thing is when there when there's a collapse an economic collapse and people don't have any food the lights are out it's winter they're cold uh they don't have any heat they're going to be looking for a savior. And this savior will probably say, it's these Christians that are making me angry. Of course, they'll say that about the Buddhists and the Hindus and everybody else. But, uh, you know, worship me, I'm God, they'll, he'll say. And I'm going to make everything all right. Yeah, it'll be all right, because you won't be cold in the winter uh, at the end of your life, because you'll be going into the flames of the pit of hell. I mean, there's a pastor, his name is Mac, Arthur, put, him, put those little together, and a uh, very famous guy, and he actually had the nerve to say that if you take the mark of the beast because of eternal security... You're going to heaven. Can you believe that? 
He actually tells his people this, and everybody praises him. Oh, you're such a great pastor. We love you. And they send him money, and, you know, I mean, seriously? You can take the mark of the beast, and you're going to heaven because of eternal security? Are you an idiot? Uh, Jesus said otherwise. Ugh. But nobody listens to me, hardly. You know? So... Where is, all right, so we've looked at those that are going to be beheaded. And that's why they've been collecting the names. And every computer has a back door that they can use to spy on us with. Every single one of them. Every single one. And when you know where Intel's factory is located, you'll know who's behind it. And by the way, Intel's factory is not in the United States, and it's not in China. It's in the Middle East, and it's not in an Arab country either, if that gives you any indication of where the factory is. Yeah, and who's spying. Yeah, and the idiots on social media, these so-called free speech websites, you know, you got those that are Q, and uh, the I call them Trump tards, uh, the Trumpsters. Oh, if only we can get Trump reelected and back in office. Well, he's going to save us. Yeah, although few know that he's one of them. I, I just, uh, I, I have put, I the Bible says don't put your confidence in man, and I can see why. All right, let's go take a look at Revelation chapter 12. And I did a in-depth study on Revelation chapter 12. If anybody's interested, if it's still on, uh, if it's still on YouTube, I don't know. I think it was about a week ago or a week before last. Uh, they deleted three of my videos in one week that they told me about. That they told me about. I've been, I've had people ask me a question. Oh, hey, Bob, do you have a study on such and such a subject? And I'm like, yeah, sure I do. And then I go look for it on YouTube and it's gone. I can't find it. And then I look at my audio files and there it is. And I see the exact name of what it's called. And then I go back to YouTube and then type in the exact name for the study on my channel. It's gone. But then I go to BitChute or whatever, Odyssey or whoever, or Rumble, and I find it there. So they're deleting uh, videos that I don't even know. They're not even telling me. They just delete them. So, and like I say, anybody wants a copy of all my work, send me a 128 gig 3.1 drive a 3.1 make sure it's a 3.1 somebody sent me a 2.0 drive it took like eight hours to copy all my files because it's slow slow i mean you're talking uh like 90 gigabytes of information i got videos audios books i got all kinds of stuff I mean, books on all kinds of different subjects. I'm more than happy to send it to people. I even pay for the postage. All I ask is you send me a drive. So, you know, don't send me the cheapest drive because that's a 2.0. Send me a 3.1. There's a big difference between a 3.0 and a 3.1. Big difference. Almost twice as fast. So, somebody sends me a fast drive, I can load all this stuff in under an hour but uh yeah send me a send me a drive i'm more than happy to send everybody this stuff because it's going to come in handy one day trust me you know i'm not even asking you for money you know i got my own money i don't need yours all right let's go to revelation chapter 12. verse 1 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. 
And those of you that don't know it, Joseph, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, had a dream. And this is the dream that he had. But we're not going to go into that because that's not what this is about. But I cover it in the other one. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, Satan and the devil, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Uh, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, there's seven continents on the uh, in the world. Some people think it's the continents. Verse 3. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. When you look at the word stars, uh, sometimes it refers to angels. And I did a Bible study on Actually, a playlist on that. Uh, Job chapter 38 proves stars are sometimes angels. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And... Some people, including me, thinks that this is a reference to when Herod tried to kill all the children in Bethlehem, right? Verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Amen to that. Now, the woman. The woman is Israel, and the woman is Israel. The church, those that are in Christ, they're not the Antichrist. Verse 6. you got to realize something. The Bible, Revelation is not in chronological order. It goes back and forth. It'll be present. It'll go to the past. It'll go to the future. Back to the past. Back to the future. It, it jumps all over the place. Verse 6, this is future. And you should read this in conjunction with Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews 11. The faith chapter. I think it's Hebrews 11. The faith chapter. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Roughly 42 months, which is mentioned other places in the Bible. It's going to be three and a half years of absolute hell on earth for Christians when the time comes. Those that are not beheaded are going to see hell on earth. Verse 7. And there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. I believe this happened before Genesis chapter 3. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was her place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Deceiveth the whole world. That's you and me, buddy. We have been guarantee you we're deceived about something. I do not ever claim to have all truth. There's a lot of things I've been deceived on in the past, and I'm sure there's some things I'm deceived on now. But I, if somebody corrects me, I can be corrected. Because one day I know that I'm going to have to kneel before the Lord and give an account for every word. And a lot of them words I'm not very proud of. So, I don't teach falsehood on purpose. And I believe me, I'm not a pillar of the faith. I've got a lot of things I've done that I'm, since I believe, that I'm not proud of. 
So, yeah. But if you are one of the ones that goes into the wilderness, you definitely want one of my uh, my video uh, my drives because I've got a lot of a lot of material on edible plants, uh, survival stuff, military manuals, uh, all kinds of stuff. But I do believe that just like uh, when God took Israel out of Egypt and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, God will supply manna and water. I truly believe that. But it's, it's going to be a very, very small remnant. Honestly, I think all these 501c3 so-called churches, I think the great majority of them maybe 99 percent i don't know god knoweth they're going to turn against the true believing remnant and they're going to worship the beast you watch these people don't have any faith they don't waste their time reading the bible well I, me reading the bible is not to me is not a waste of time but to them it is i mean they're too busy watching television, uh, sports, uh, anything but. I mean, when people invite me to like a church or something so-called, uh, a lot of times I'll ask them, oh, hey, uh, what's your 10 favorite books in the Bible? And usually they can name two or three, maybe four or five. They can't even name 10 books in the Bible. And if you haven't, if you can't even name 10 books, I know you haven't read them. You know, that's how you come up with the pre-trib rapture. Because you've never bothered to read. Never. I mean, people sit around and yell at their TV screen because their favorite sports team's losing or drop the ball or whatever. I mean, stupid. I don't think God cares about the Super Bowl. God doesn't care about the uh, World Series or the basketball playoffs. You know, he just doesn't care, I don't think. I don't think God's I don't think God's sitting there glued to the TV watching this filth, but I don't know. Now, those of you that are going into the wilderness, you know, when you meet, well, before we get there, the cities are going to become dangerous. They really are. They already are, but I mean, they're going to become even more dangerous. And people are going to have to flee to the wilderness just to escape being murdered in the cities when the time comes. And they're going to be wondering, why is this happening to us? Oh, it's simple. Because Christians were supposed to be salt of the earth, and they're not. Christians were supposed to do, do make sure that the government followed God's laws. They don't. Instead, they tolerate all the evil and filth. God never told us to tolerate evil and filth. He told us to be rid of it. I did a study on King Josiah. You know what Josiah did? He got rid of the evil. You know how you get rid of evil? You get rid of those doing the evil. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, now they tell you, oh, well, Jesus doesn't want us to do that kind of stuff because he loves everybody. Uh, then why did God, why does... Why does the Lord say he hated Esau and all his descendants that are going to be burned? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look up Esau on my channel. Look up Esau, E-S-A-U. You know, it's uh, getting to the point where you can't even find white people on TV anymore. So, this is my suggestion. You should have a escape survival pack with things that you need. 
Uh, the most important thing, well, three most important things you need is probably a good knife, maybe two or three, in case one gets lost. You know, some one heavy duty, a uh, way to make a fire, a uh, ferrocesium rod, ferro rod, fire stick, fire steel, whatever they call it, and a way to purify water. And there's a company called Sawyer that makes a reverse osmosis type thing, and it's supposed to be good for filtering 100,000 gallons of water. Now, you might have to backwash it once in a while, but uh, it'll work. But absolutely, the most important thing to have is the bread of life. Now, that's Christ. But, uh, you know, having a Bible in your thing so that, you know, the most important thing, spiritually. But physically, a knife, a way to make a fire, and a way to purify water. But in that Bible, you could do one of two things. On the blank pages in your Bible, you can write these notes. For example, you could write white, as in why, uh, what, what Christ and his people look like. And, and then when you meet a Baptist or whatever in the wilderness, and they're crying because the pre-trib rapture didn't happen yet. And you can explain to them, uh, you don't even know why this is happening to us? Well, duh. In Revelation 1 and verse 14, speaking of Jesus, what he looks like. John was describing what he saw with Jesus. His head and his hairs were white, white, like wool, and of course the Hebrews will say, oh, that'd be woolly, that'd be woolly. No, it doesn't say his hair was woolly. It says it was white like wool, as white as snow. Huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh, has anybody ever seen a gas stove? What color is the flame on a gas stove? Blue. So white as snow, blue eyes, probably. And his feet like under fine brass. How about the Song of Solomon 5 and verse 10? My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. Ruddy. There's only two groups of people that are ruddy. White people whose skin can show blood. And you could argue the Indians. But Indians are red. They're not white. So that discredits them. Unless, of course, you're a moron. I mean, a Mormon. Uh, and you think the Indians were uh, the tribes of Israel. Oh, those people are all messed up. Mormons think that uh, da, 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 Satan and Jesus are brothers. Well, I agree that their Christ is the brother of Satan. I absolutely believe that. But my Jesus created everything, including the angels. And Satan fell. But, uh, yeah. How about Lamentations 4 and 7? Chapter 4 and verse 7. Her Nazarites, Jesus was called a Nazarene, remember? Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. Whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. You ever seen a ruby? They're red. Their polishing was of sapphire. And, of course, you can show this to people and they'll say, oh, well, that's mistranslated. Those white people mistranslated the Bible. Uh, and that's why you need a King James. The King James is the most hated Bible there is because it tells you what to do with those that um, put their wee-wee in the wrong hole. 
and those that practice uh, magic and what have you. And it's not preached to them about the love of Jesus. So in your Bible, you could either mark these chapt uh, chapters and verses. You could put white, Israel, whatever, or on a separate piece of paper that you could fold and stick it in your Bible. And you will know what to show people when the time comes. I mean, I don't even have all these things memorized. I should memorize them, but I haven't. But I got a couple Bibles I put away into storage. Uh, if that's my lot in life, they'll probably come and collect me. But uh, I'll be happy to teach people in prison before they cut my head off. I'll be happy to. I mean, I've known I'd probably... I've known since 1990 I'd probably... There's a very real possibility I'd die for Christ. He died for me. Perhaps I'll be called to die for him. All right, how about uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17? Starting in verse 40. King David is going, well, future King David, David the shepherd boy, who is probably, you know, they, they want you to think he was a 12-year-old. He's probably 18 maybe 17, 18, 19 here. So 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40, And he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Why five? Well, in the Bible, five is a number associated with grace, but also... Goliath had, uh, I, I think, well, I think there was five, five brothers, either uh, Goliath, I think, yeah, I think Goliath had four brothers, or I think there was five of them total. I, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy, ruddy like rubies, remember? And of a fair countenance. Uh, snow white. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest? Who's the fairest of them all? And they'll tell you now, oh, fair just means beautiful. No, fair means, a fair complexion means white. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And I think you know the rest of the story, so. All right. Um, now, when they ask you, oh, wait a minute here. Oh, uh, you know, wait a minute. I always taught that uh, the you-know-whos are uh, uh, Israel. Now, wait a minute. How can that be true? All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abram, Abram's name was changed to Abraham, right? And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Does a few, few million you know who's? Does that is that like multiplying exceedingly? I don't think so. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, not the whole world. His covenant was with Abraham, not the whole world. Unlike the Baptist church will tell you. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Many nations. Uh, where's all these many Jewish nations? Where are they? I don't, there's only one. 
And that was created by the Antichrist United Nations, which are united in Satan, if you ask me. Where are they? Where's all these Jewish nations? Uh, if you're looking in the Middle East, well, is it for Israel, you might be confused. I don't know. Verse 5. And thou shalt be a father of many nations, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many, many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings, kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed, children, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Wow. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Wow. Where is all these, uh, you know, many nations? There are many nations of Israel, but we're the demon nominational church world is looking in the wrong place to find Israel. So, what is the definition of an antichrist? Because that's the modern church world calls the antichrist God's chosen you know who's. First John 2:22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Is there a group of people in this world that deny that Jesus is the Christ? Because if they believe that Jesus was the Christ, they would be Christians. They'd be proud to be called Christians. They would be honored. But they don't do that. They call themselves Messianics, don't they? Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not, the same hath not the Father. So if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. A contrary to what the modern denominational church world will tell you. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So if the you-know-whos do not accept Jesus as Messiah, then who is their Messiah? Satan? The beast? The man of sin? The son of perdition? The Antichrist? I think, I hope you know the answer to that. 1 Corinthians 16, 22, and you should be writing all these verses down you know first john chapter 2 you write antichrist in your bible or on a sheet of paper that you're going to put inside your bible that you'll keep with your pack and you can refer to it at a later time when the internet is gone and you find somebody from the baptist church that says why is all this stuff happening to us I can't figure it out. I say, well, I'll be happy to show you. Oh, wait a minute. Your pastor taught you that the Antichrist are the chosen people? Chosen for what? Well, Paul in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, which is a Greek word meaning cursed. Let him be anathema maranatha. Do the you know who's love Jesus or are they cursed? I think you know the answer to that. Uh, Mystery Babylon. Okay. Guess what? They'll tell you, you ask a hundred churches, what city is Mystery Babylon? 99 out of a hundred, if not 999 out of a thousand, maybe Maybe a couple. Maybe I'm off by a couple. But they'll say Rome, 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 Rome. The Vatican. The Pope. 
What does the Bible say? Well, write this scripture down. The two end time witnesses of God are mentioned here. Revelation 11, 8. 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies, the two witnesses, one of them will be Elijah. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. What are they doing in the great city? They're preaching the gospel of Christ and repentance. And then they're, they're going to be killed by the false prophet or the beast. <coughs> Excuse me. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where also our Lord was crucified. Uh, was Jesus crucified in Rome? No. Jesus, my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So tell them to take that and chew on it. Okay, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Now let's take a look at that. Do you know that there's only one group of people that deny Jesus is the Christ and that he performed his miracles by the power of the devil? There's only one group of people that does this. And they're the same ones that uh, have control of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. I'm trying to get by the censors. So why do most you-know-whos reject the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Simple. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is the unpardonable sin. Mark chapter 3 and verse 22. And the scribes, who were the scribes? The scribes were the people that copied the Bible. They were the ones... Bibles used to be hand copied and they didn't have printing presses and they didn't have books like they got now. So they would get a parchment and hand copy the Bible. So, you know, you do that for 10 or 20 years, you should know the Bible pretty well. But most of them knew the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law. And matter of fact, scribe is where you get the word scribble from, which means to write. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He, meaning Jesus, he hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils, the prince of the devils, casteth he out devils. See, Jesus was casting out devils out of people. So here it is, these scribes are accusing Jesus of being possessed of the devil and casting out devils by the power of Satan. And then in verse, chap, Mark chapter 3, verse 28, Jesus replying to them says, Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But... You know, goats like the butt. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. You see, these scribes were attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to the devil. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation damnation because they said he hath an unclean spirit they were accusing jesus of being possessed of a devil so attributing the works of god to the devil seals their fate forever and this is taught in a certain group's religious center 
probably every Sabbath day. So, so these pastors are telling you that those who reject Jesus are the chosen people of God? Says who? Your paid for pastor? Who owns the banks? Who owns the mortgage on the church building? Well, so-called church and the building. Now, who's Israel? Remember, write down Mark chapter 3. Blasphemy. Write that down. How about Jeremiah 3, 8? God divorced Israel. Did you know that God divorced Israel? Oh yeah, absolutely, he did. But not Judah. God never divorced Judah. Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. He was sick and tired of her spiritual adultery. He was married. The Lord was married to Israel. And she was a whore. And he got tired of it and says, I'm divorcing you, you little whore. And I saw, went for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Harlot, that's just a $20 word for a whore. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. So God divorced basically, I guess you could say ten and a half tribes. But what about in the future? Is that it for Israel? They're divorced? That's it? They're, they're done with? No. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, not a renewed covenant like the Hebrew roots deceivers will tell you. See, they want you to go back into keeping the laws for your salvation, like the Noahides. That ain't going to work, people. It's either in Christ or you're out of Christ. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, new, N-E-W, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. See, they're not the same. I know your pastor lied to you and told you they were, but they're not. Why would the Lord say, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah? Because Israel was divorced, but Judah wasn't. All right, let's go to the New Testament. You know, write this, write these down. Jeremiah 3, 8 and Jeremiah 31, 31. Divorce and new covenant. Write it down on a piece of paper and save it or in your Bible. How about Jesus speaking in Matthew 15, 24? Write it down. But he, Jesus, answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Where does he say he's sent to the whole world? I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They were lost because they were divorced. And the whole world is not Israel. No. It's an exclusive covenant God made with Abraham and his children. How about Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12? That at that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Why would Paul say this? Really, really simple. They were divorced Israel. Ephesians, Ephesus was a city in Greece that had... Greeks there. And the New Testament was written in Greek. Let's read verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, 
ye who were sometimes were far off, they were far off, they were divorced, are made nigh, near, by the blood of Christ. Wow. How about John 10, 27? Jesus speaking. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Goats do not hear the voice of Christ. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Do you hear the voice of Christ? Do you follow him? How about Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 and verse 29? Write this in your Bible. This is who God's chosen people are right here. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye. Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. It doesn't say your spiritual seed or you become Abraham's seed. No, it says you are Abraham's seed. And that's why you hear the voice of Christ, because you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Do you get it yet? Why? Why is there? Why do they hate? white Christians so much. They know who we are. We don't know who we are, but they know who we are. The enemy does. Absolutely, they know. Is there a second witness? Absolutely. Hosea, one of the minor prophets. Minor in size, not, in, uh, not minor in importance. You know, the minor prophets, uh, I've never been to a a place, I guess, you know, they call it a church. I've never been to a church where they encourage people to read the minor prophets. Oh, that's for the Jews. That's not for us. Really? You know, matter of fact, most places with these paid for whore pastors will tell you don't even read the Old Testament because, oh, that doesn't, that's not for us. That's a different dispensation. No, we're New Testament Christians. No, you're not. You're liars. That's what you are. Hosea, chapter 1, verse 9. Now remember, God was angry at Israel. Then said God, call his name. Hosea, uh, Gom or, uh, Hosea had a son. Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people. And I will not, ye are not my people, not and I will not be your God. Remember, God divorced Israel in Jeremiah 3, 8. Remember that. But yet in Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10, the next verse, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Do a few million you know who's over in the Middle East? Are they like the sand of the sea? People, I've lived in Florida almost all my life. And just one beach has got millions of grains of sand. Millions of them. No. No, they're, they, they can't be Israel. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place, Jerusalem, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. So, do the you know who's fulfilled this prophecy? Those antichrists over in the Middle East? I don't think so. Have you ever read this book of Hosea? Very few have, and almost no preachers will touch it. How about Hosea chapter 2, verse 23? And I will sow her unto me in the earth. And I will have mercy, mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. Who is he talking about? Israel. I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy because God divorced her. And I will say to them which were not my people, 
Why? Because they were divorced. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people. And they shall say, Thou art my God. Remember, Jesus said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not the whole world. Do we have another witness? How about Romans? The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 25. As he, God, saith also in Osi, that's the Greek rendering of Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place, Jerusalem, where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Who was God's beloved? Israel was. Paul right here is quoting Hosea, Old Testament prophecy for Israel in the book of Romans. So the Ro some of these Romans had to be divorced Israel. Think about the New Testament and the marriage supper of the Lamb. Matthew 15, 24, But he, Jesus, answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost, divorced, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Wow. Now, the thing is, you listen to pastors and they'll tell you, Oh, well, the, the, the church didn't even exist until the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. No, they're liars. You know, this is why they'll tell you, a lot of people will tell you that Paul was a false apostle. Because Paul, Paul destroys a lot of heresies. A lot of them. So in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, which was a city in Greece, Paul says that the church was with Moses in the wilderness. What? I've never heard that before, Chaplain Bob. Well, get out your King James and read it. Mark these scriptures down. The church didn't start in the book of Acts. It was already there under Moses. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Ignorant. Ignorant means you lack knowledge in something. Paul says, I don't want you to be have a lack of understanding. I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What sea? The Red Sea. And if you've ever bothered to read the book of Exodus, you would know that there was a cloud that followed, well, that Israel followed, and it was a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire by night. Our, fa our fathers. He's talking about Israel here. Our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, the Red Sea. You know, when, when, when the Red Sea parted, and Israel went across on dry ground. That was considered a type of baptism here. Verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Remember, God gave Israel manna in the wilderness. How in the world can you survive for 40 years in a, in, in a desert? There's no food. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Of course, the Catholic Church will tell you the, the rock is Peter. But, uh, you know, I like Peter. He's probably one of my favorite apostles. Maybe my favorite. But he's not the rock. I'm sure he's a great guy, but he's not, a, he's not the rock. Now, what are they talking about drinking from the rock here? Uh, we're not talking about the movie actor. Uh, 
there was a rock that Moses struck that provided water in the wilderness. Oh, you never read the book of Exodus? Well, break it out, buddy boy, girly girl, and you'll and live and learn. And did all drink the same spiritual rock, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, and they were overthrown in the wilderness. Uh, God got mad at them because they were stiff-necked, rebellious, uh, unbelieving, blasphemous, sort of like uh, the modern world today. So Paul is considered the apostle to the Gentiles. And it seems he was not speaking to the Jews. After all, Paul is in Greece. But he was telling them that they were there, they were with they were with Moses in the Old Testament. Or rather their great 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 grandfather. I don't know, something like that. Maybe I left a couple of greats off, but uh you know, I mean, think about it. Paul is telling them the church was with Moses in the wilderness. In the book of Exodus. It didn't start in the book of Acts. So, I hope you will write down all these different um, verses. Stick them in a piece of paper. Write them in the margins of your Bible. Maybe on the front cover where you got some blank spaces so that you could tell people that are lacking understanding because they've been brainwashed by these denominational pastors that I have nothing but contempt for. You know how many times I've gone to these so-called places and been shunned and told to leave? And I'm not confrontational. I just ask questions. Uh, but pastor, um, you know, Song of Solomon says white and ruddy. Um, how can he be black? Oh, well, you're being divisive. You got to leave. Oh, okay. See you later, alligator. You know, it's, and you know, I don't get paid to do this, you know? Hey, I could be watching uh, college football or or the NFL, the National Felons League, or basketball, or the World Series, or I don't know, bowling? I don't know. Or five-card draw poker, whatever championship, and yeah, or game shows. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, there might be a part two to this. But like I say, um, if you know who gives me a strike, remember, I'm on Gab, BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. And uh, because you say the wrong word, and next thing you know, uh, your channel's gone, or your video's gone, and, you know. There was a saying in World War II. Bombers were bombing factories. And I wish we had never had World War II, but uh, the bombers said that when the flak, and that was when the cannons were shooting at the bombers, when the, uh, when the, heaviest, when the bombers were under the heaviest fire, they knew they were over the target. Yeah. So when you're getting videos deleted on a certain subject, you know you're on target. Absolutely. So. Uh, and honestly, I'm surprised my channel is even up for as long as it is. So, I don't know. Maybe they're collecting names. But I'm sure Father... Uh, is keeping it up for until his last sheep has been brought into the fold, I guess. I, I, I hope you all will keep me in your prayers that I might feed the sheep and 
honor Christ and the Father. Because my life hasn't been doing that too much. But, uh, you know, we're entering some dark times, people. Dark times. Get your kids out of school. Your school, the sc modern schools are going to be, you know, they're 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 turning them into prisons. Oh well, we're trying to keep those school shooters out. No, they're not. They're trying to keep your kids in. Yeah. And uh, you know, put some things away for the future because things are going to get bad. And one day your money's going to fail. And they got a replacement. It's called digital currency. The mark of the beast. So, you know, what's the worst thing that happens if you buy food? You could eat it at a later date. But what happens if you got money in the bank and the bank closes? Whoops, sorry, your money's gone. Uh, what was that? I, now, I hate South Park. But... What was it? Uh, one of the guys put his money in the bank and then the banker goes, uh, and it's gone. And he's like, the kid's like, what? Your money, it's gone. You know, and they, they, they think this is comedy. But the television's telling you what they plan on doing. You know, I know people that got a lot of money in the bank. And one day they're going to lose every penny of it. And they're going to be crying because their treasures are not in heaven. They're on this earth. And I'm not going to have much sympathy for them. Because my, my treasures are not on this earth either. So, keep in your prayers, people. If you want a copy of all my work, send me a 128 gigabyte 3.1 3.1 USB drive or, or an SD card. SD card's even better. And I will make sure to get all the information to you. And like I say, I don't, I copyright nothing. Everything's to the glory of God. And uh, if you want to post it on social media and get banned, <laughs> go for it. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.